Hi and welcome back to this, the complete overhaul and modification of the Chinese 7x12 mini lathe. Last week I was continuing with the scraping of the cross slide to the saddle and then the saddle to the bed and that's what I'm still working on this week as well. Before I try and finalize the um, cross slide guideways geometry, I just want to touch off and have a look at where I'm at with the actual saddle to bedways. Now these look horrible, so let's just blue them up and see how bad they really are. Okay, I'm not as not as bad as I was expecting. We're getting pretty decent coverage on the V-way. Missing spot, missing in the middle, but it's care, it's um, touching off on both edges, and yeah, the 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 rear way is also not as bad as I would have expected. So after a number of hours of scraping I've now got the uh, saddle ways to the bed as good as I'm going to get them. Uh, I'm getting pretty good contact on both ends, maybe a little light through the middle which is kind of how you want it anyway. Um, I've blued up this far too hard, it's quite difficult to get a, a right, the right heaviness of bluing on this, um, this in a way but yeah, seems to be fine so from, I'll mount it and move on. Now that I've finished the cross slides dovetail, I need to scrape the dovetail on the saddle. But here I've got an additional requirement. Not only does it have to fit the cross slide dovetail, it also has to be perpendicular to the spindle. To perform this check, I need the faceplate on the spindle. And the first thing I'm doing is just checking that the faceplate does actually turn concentrically with the spindle. And there we can see it does. There's a little bit of scatter, but that's probably because there's a little rust on there. But it's running pretty straight. Here's the setup. I've got the dial indicator mounted onto the cross slide. And we're just touching off across the face of the face plate. Obviously it jumps as it goes across the, the markings. But as we move in from the outside, measurement is dropping, which means that the, the plunge is moving further forward, which would mean that the um, cross slide is cutting concave, which is correct. And we're, we're concave about 0.14 millimeters over this distance, which is not very large. The distance we've moved is approximately six centimeters. Yeah, that's 0.14 millimeters over six centimeters is far too concave, I would say. We need to look that up in Connolly. But our measurement seems somewhat repeatable. Here's Connolly's take on this, uh, on the required accuracy. Uh, you can see they're recommending for a 12 inch swing lathe a maximum of one thousandth of an inch of, uh, of concavity I guess you'd call it. So 
a 12 inch swing would mean a 6 inch um, radius, uh, 6 inches being 15 centimeters. So you're looking at a maximum of 1 thousandth of an inch over 15 centimeters or 6 inches. I'm currently getting um, five th just over 5 thousandth of an inch on about 6 centimeters. So I'm roughly, let's call it three times six, so eighteen thousandth over the over the um, same sort of distance. So I'm eighteen times the rec the allowable limit. So basically, what it tells me is scrape away and work work on re-straightening that uh, that angle because it's cutting way too ca concave at, at present. Before we start scraping, we also need to look at the how parallel these two V-ways are and how thick they are. So once again, I'm using six millimeter carbide uh, end mills as cylinders, halfway precise cylinders. So across this first one, I'm at let's call it just a bit over 30. 30. And down this end, 32. Okay, so that's good because that's this is the area which I need to remove these both this way, the, this side and this side to rotate that um, cross slide. So I guess it being with it being thickest down this end, I'll start by doing a a pass down here. So what's the strategy? I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to rotate the back end of the um, saddle dovetail towards the tailstock. So that's taking extra uh, extra meat off this part. Uh, to do that, I'll be scraping initially this dovetail here. Of course, once I've got the front dovetail straightened up, I'll then need to check the parallelism. Luckily, I can use my same scraping jig to hold the saddle that I used for holding the cross slide. As I've got such a large error to correct, I'll start off by doing just some, some step scraping without printing. So why do we step scrape? This is a technique which is used when we're trying to actually change geometry rather than just improve it. In this case, I need to move this part of the way, or this end of the way, backwards, as we see it. So I break it down into, into blocks, scrape here, one way and then back, then all the way and back, all the way and back. I end up with this piece being scraped one time, two, three, four, five, and this being scraped six times. So six times the material removal at one end to the other, and therefore it changes the angle without really making a big difference to the flatness of the way. At least that's the theory. have it, one round of step scraping. So this gives me two advantages. One, this is the way you mo move the geometry by taking a lot more off this end than this end, but in a systematic way that the whole way should stay relatively straight. 
it's a much faster way of moving metal because you're not having to stop and touch off and print between every pass. Um, in this case, of course, it's the first pass, so it also gives me a nice roughed up, scraped surface, which prints better on, on the bluing compound. Um, and yeah, from here we need to now see, are we moving in the right direction? How straight is it? And the other thing we have to look at is, does this angle match the angle of the cross slide? So after doing one pass of step scraping on each side, moving this corner in and this corner in, let's see what's done to the geometry. So this end was 32, now it's down to 30. This was 30, we're now down to 27. So I maybe scraped a little bit too much through the middle. And this end is just below 30. Let's call it about 29. The next thing we'll do is put it back on the lathe and see whether that rotation has improved the concave or concave concavity. When testing for a concave cut against the faceplate, the first thing we need to know is, is the faceplate actually flat? And the answer is, no it's not. So we're going to have to flatten the faceplate. This project can actually be quite frustrating at times. I've just spent best part of a day setting up to scrape in the saddle, measuring things and getting started on the scraping, only to find out that the master I've been using here is not flat. The fact that I've got contact around the edges of this faceplate would indicate to me that it's already dish shaped. What does it mean? It means I need to scrape this as well before I can do any more, any more work on the saddle. One step forward, two steps back. How heavily dished is this faceplate? Well, let's try it. This is a sharp edged uh, straight edge. And if we shine a light under the back of it, we can see no light through the ends, a pretty thick light through the middle. And once again, it's touching at the end. With a feeler gauge, I can just get the five thousandth of an inch or 0.127 millimeter feeler gauge underneath. The next, the next one, the sixth hour, doesn't go through. So that's what we need to scrape off. So after my disappointment yesterday of finding out that I'd screwed up this measurement and mis misinterpreted the dishing or concave face of this uh, faceplate as being an error on the cross slide and started scraping the cross slide to see whether I can improve this at least somewhat with the bolly lathe and therefore scrape less I've now mounted the face plate onto the onto the bolly and I've tapped it into as close as I can get to um, round there's still a fair bit of run out it's still got probably five one hundredths of a millimeter of run out but seeing as I got 18 one hundredths of a millimeter of um, dishing to take off this face, any little bit should help. And if I look at it, let me just put it into a, about a neutral position here. If we look at the, 
the movement across the face, you can see that it's got that same drop off towards the middle. So the, the same dishing out that we saw on the, the mini lathe. And that agrees with the, the measurements I took of flatness of this. So I'm now going to mount a cutting tool. Just take a skim cut and then we'll take another look at it. Well, that first cut is what I was hoping to see. It's cutting out here at the edges and stops by this point. So I'll do another, another cut and keep, keep going until I've got it um, close to cleaned up and then we'll measure again. So I haven't quite cleaned up all the way through to the inside, but putting the knife straight edge on it and shining the light underneath it would indicate that if anything, it now tends slightly convex, if anything. But it's much less than before, so I think I'll switch now to scraping. Let's have a look and see whether that turning job actually helped with the flatness at all. That's about what I expected. The bolly's obviously turning slightly uh, convex, which is in itself a bad thing, so it's taken more off the outside than it has off the inside. Um, I didn't go all the way to the center, so there's a bit of a dish in the middle. So my estimate is we've got high spot, low spot, but as it's some, it should be less to scrape than it was before. A couple of months ago, I posted a video on this faceplate that I made for my bolly lathe. Um, and I've just touched this off just to see what it looks like. And sure enough, the print is showing that the bolly is cutting slightly convex, which a lathe shouldn't do. So yeah, it's another reason why I'm gonna have to get stuck in and, and scrape in the bolly once, the, uh, once this job's finished. By the way, if you're interested, I'll put a link to uh, the video I made on making this faceplate, which, <coughs> which I made from a casting I did myself in the backyard. So. So here we are about three hours later and I now have a flat faceplate so I can move on to checking the cross slide alignment which I probably screwed up before. Looking at the run out first, it's not perfect but it's not too bad, good enough for doing this measurement and then looking at the angle as it goes to the middle. It's hard to get a consistent measurement. To measure the perpendicularity of the of the cross slide gui uh, guideways I really need some way of locking the saddle to, so I don't accidentally introduce uh, errors uh, in the longitudinal axis. Luckily, I made this saddle lock years ago when I first got the, the lathe. Just fits on here. I put, drilled a couple of extra holes into the side of the saddle. The saddle lock's pretty simple. It was one of the first things I made on the, the lathe itself. It's just a block of steel bolted in place with a screw going down to push on this part, which is just pivoted and clamps down on the bottom of the, the forward way with this little lever.
So now with the saddle not locked down, the gib's nice and tight, no slop in the system, let's measure it. Generally what I'm seeing is a slight rise of about two to three units from here to the center, which would of course mean that the cross slide is cutting convex, which is an absolute no-no for a lathe. So basically the corrections that I did yesterday, the corrections, did screw up the geometry, so now I'm going to have to go back and fix them. So it's looking pretty much zero straight across, so that's good. Means so we can just finish off scraping that dovetail and get for a contact now, but the angle seems to be quite okay. Well that took a while, but I've now finished scraping in the cross slide. And the saddle. The next task will be making a new gib strip. This one's too short, so I want to make a new one the full, full width. But I think that's going to be for next week, because it's time I start cutting some of this, this footage together, and that's also something that takes me quite a while. Once again, thanks very much for watching, and a special big thanks to Aid from Aid's Workshop, because I think the um, shout out he gave me boosted this channel from basically nothing to about a thousand subscribers, which is kind of cool. So if you see like what you see, please hit like, please subscribe, and I'll get back to you with the next video.